No worries. Ow! Let's take a look in our discussion. In our discussion on Previously, we said that quarks have a quantum property known as color, and the color of each quark creates or gives it the color charge. So this is similar to electrons having electric charge, except quarks not only have electric charge, they also have color charge. Now recall from quantum electrodynamics, we know that our electrons interact with one another via the exchange of a fundamental particle known as a photon and that photon is said to carry or mediate the electromagnetic force that repels our electrons. Now in a similar way, when two quarks interact with one another, they also exchange a fundamental particle, but this fundamental particle is known as our gluon. And when the quarks exchange the gluon, that gluon is said to carry or mediate the strong force, also known as the color force, that is a result of the color charge on those two quarks. So these two Feynman diagrams basically describe graphically how the interactions actually take place. So let's take a look at our electron-electron interaction. Now when the two electrons approach one another, eventually they get close enough and in that moment in time, one of those electrons will emit or release a photon, also known as a virtual photon because it cannot actually be observed experimentally. So when the virtual photon is released by our electron 1 to conserve momentum, electric one, electron 1 basically recoils and travels in this direction. Now when the second interacting electron absorbs that photon, our electron also recoils to conserve our momentum. And we say that this virtual photon is a fundamental particle that carries the electromagnetic force that exists between particles that have charge. Now in a similar way, if we examine two quarks, let's suppose the up quark that has the color green and the down quark that has the color red, the color of the two quarks gives them color charge. And because they have this quantum property known as color charge, they will feel a force known as the color force. So when they, um, when they approach one another eventually, at some given moment in time when they get close enough, they will exchange a fundamental particle known as the gluon. And the gluon carries this color force, which is basically the strong nuclear force. So this squiggly line shows our strong force being exchanged, our gluon being ex exchanged between our two two quarks. Now, an important difference between the photon and the gluon is as follows. So that photon does not actually carry electric charge. So that means whatever the charge of this electron was before the interaction, the charge of that electron is the same after that interaction. However, our gluon actually carries not only this color force, the strong force, it also carries that color charge. So not only do we have an exchange of our color force, we have an exchange of our color charge. So if this initially was green, after the interaction, this will be red. And if this initially was red, after the interaction, this will be green. So, once again, we see that gluons are the exchange particles that carry the strong force, the color force, that exists between quarks in an analogous way to photons being the exchange particles between our electrons and carrying that electromagnetic force. 
However, unlike photons that do not carry the electric charge between the two electrons, gluons do carry the color charge and that color charge is exchanged between our two quarks. So if this had the color green and this had the color red, after the gluon is exchanged, the colors are also exchanged. This will become red and this will become green. So the gluon is the fundamental particle that is said to carry the strong force that exists between quarks. And this force is also known as the color force because it exists as a result of the color charge on our different quarks. Now, recall that all the particles that exist in nature are broken down into two categories. We have fundamental particles such as our gluons and photons and we also have the hadrons and the hadrons are basically particles that have internal structure. They are composed of quarks. So we have two types of hadrons. We have the baryons which consist of three quarks and we have our mesons which consist of the quark anti-quark pair. So we see that in hadrons quarks exist in groups. We either have a group of three quarks as in the baryons or we have a group of a quark anti-quark pair as the case is for mesons. Now we might wonder, do quarks actually exist as individual particles, as individual species? Can we actually take a quark from within, let's say a proton, and isolate that quark and examine and study that quark experimentally? In fact, experiments have been done using high energy particle accelerators in which quarks have been bombarded with particles to try to separate the quarks from other quarks to isolate those quarks. However, these experiments have been unsuccessful in isolating and examining individual quarks. Why is that? Well, it basically is a result of the strong force that holds the quarks together, the color force that holds the quarks together as a result of this color charge that each quark has. So basically, as it turns out, separating a quark from other quarks requires an extremely large, a tremendous amount of energy because quarks are held by the strongest possible force in nature known as the strong nuclear force or the color force. And so much energy is required that when we actually bombard the quarks with our particles that carry that kinetic energy, the energy transfer during the collision between the particle and our quarks actually ends up producing even more groups of quarks, for example baryons and mesons as per Einstein's mass energy equivalence equation. So basically because those protons carry so much energy, that energy is enough to basically create quarks. Remember, Einstein's equation tells us that energy is equivalent to mass. We can interconvert from mass to energy and from energy to mass. So when we give those quarks enough energy, we end up producing even more quarks. So by bombarding our quarks or groups of quarks with our high energy particles, we end up producing other hadrons, other baryons, and mesons. And this property of quark behavior, basically our inability to separate and isolate individual quarks, is known as quark confinement. 
So, what exactly can we conclude about our discussion on the confinement of quarks? So basically, we cannot actually isolate and examine experimentally our quarks because they are held together by very, very strong forces known as color forces or strong nuclear forces. And these forces require a tremendous amount of energy to actually overcome. So when we actually attempt to overcome those energies, those forces, the strong nuclear forces by bombarding our particles in high energy accelerators, there is such a tremendous amount of exchange in energy between the quarks and our particles that takes place that we end up producing more pairs or more triplets of quarks. And so we cannot actually isolate those quarks and examine those quarks individually. So, this entire idea, the fact that our quarks are basically confined to being in groups of either triplets or the quark-anti-quark -quark pair as exists in the meson is known as quark confinement.